Well, Second Timothy, first and foremost, is a group that Bishop established about three years ago. It's a group of men we meet once a month at 6 a.m. to talk about kingdom and to talk about business. Uh, Steve? Wow. No, you are. Nobody wants to buy a computer. Nobody. How does somebody know what they want if they've never even seen it? Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. It's right in line with the topics and everything that we've been discussing for the past three and a half, four years. Bishop Cajon is a very, very illustrative teacher. And so he'll take us to a movie like this, we'll watch it, and then after the movie is done, we'll digest it. We've been examining all successful businesses, the strategies, the models that they've been using. And if you really look at the time frame, there hasn't been too many that have been more successful than Apple. I'm going to be looking to see what is validated in the Bible and also what I can bring back to kind of put into my little strategies for getting my thing started. Whether it be in the, I'm not an entrepreneur yet, but whether it be in the workplace or when I get to that point where I start my own business and whatnot. And we'll just break down the different nuances of the movie and we'll relate it back to the Word of God and Kingdom Principles. And then when we get back to the table, we'll have a lot to, to pull from. Stephen Jobs, the man, was interesting. His ups and downs, and points of humiliation, and points of success. Uh, and then his visionary thinking was revolutionary. And as I left the movie today, I'm just kind of pensive myself, thinking about new vision, thinking about uh, are we trying to be better or are we trying to be different? And uh, that's a powerful statement that will resonate in my spirit for the rest of probably this year. I don't think you'll leave that, that movie and have an entrepreneurial spirit and leave out of there not more entrepreneurial, not more creative, not more visionary. And I think there is a seed planted today that will help to catapult us all to greatness. And I think one of the things that Job showed us was the innovation of synergy. He always picked the right team players and put the right people together to create the right atmosphere and the right product. Because I think many of us are one or two people away from actually achieving our goals and really just synergizing and becoming that force that God really called us to be. For you personally, what is the most like inspirational thing, that the takeaway? What are you going to take away that will affect your music, your business, your family, your ministry? What are your takeaways? You actually can't have fear factor and coupled with the fact that you have to be consistent. Once you believe, once you lock into that vision, you gotta have tunnel vision on it, onto it. 
And so he was very consistent in his vision. No matter what happened, he stayed, he stayed there. People didn't believe, he still believed that the vision that he had, what he saw, that he could do something different, even in what was not right, is to do it in excellence. He did have that, that perspective. One of the things that I got out of this thing was that you have to be able to step back away from something sometimes in order, like I say, to see the forest for the trees because when he was so immersed in it, he didn't see everything, that all the chaos that was going on that he was causing to create. When we represent Christ, do we represent his brand? It's almost like what we were talking about last night, you know, when you're, you're building, Paul talked about it, you're building on another man's cornerstone. You know, Peter talked about it. You can't just build on another man's cornerstone any old kind of way. You know, so are we representing the brand? Do we still have the brand? And and, and that's what I was asking Dex, because I was saying like, am I still as creative as I was when I first started? You know, we've always had the excellent thing, but Jobs had excellence and difference. You know, so I'm not just gonna be excellent, but I'm gonna be excellent and I'm gonna be different. And that was a powerful, a powerful takeaway for me. That really, really took out to me was, and, and you brought us and mentioned it, about the importance of vision and the ability to have a vision first and foremost, but then also the ability to sell the vision to others, whether you're selling it to your employees, whether you're selling it to your business partners, whether you're selling it to yourself, or whether you're selling it to potential investors and a consumer. And so this movie just really provoked me to think about exactly what my vision is for my business, what my vision is uh, for the ministries that I've been called to lead. Um, in the movie, Jobs had this almost maniacal vision of what was possible, this vision of what was new, this vision of the future, but he was so consumed by it that it inhibited his ability to deal with those closest to him and even at one point denying his own daughter. When he had said, made that comment where he called that guy 150 times or something like that. And the, what I'm gonna take from this is to be more tenacious as it relates to ministry, as it relates to business, my personal business, um, because I don't think the majority of us would have called someone 150 times. And sometimes we get so discouraged after the maybe the second call that we just kind of give up. So Steve called this guy 149 times. Each time he got a no or I'll call you back or whatever. And you know, he didn't get discouraged, he kept going back. So I think, you know, as an entrepreneur, I'm gonna start being more tenacious about whatever it is that God's telling me to do. If he never made that 150th call, the man would have never came. And Apple probably would have never been established. He was listening to a Walkman, and he was like, this is junk. And then, next thing you know, through his leadership, they had the iPod, and they said that that whole thing about the thousand songs in your pocket, yeah. instead of this big, One you know, big yeah. right, that you had to press the button, and then he throws it away. Yeah. I'm thinking, man, and, and I don't want to get with Lewis, but I, I'm thinking about the problem of evangelism, and I'm thinking how these altar calls that we do, and I'm almost thinking that they need to be in reverse. Instead of you know always going after people that want to be saved, we need to go after people that don't want to be saved. Get them in a setting outside of the church, maybe invite them to an after church little thing, put it on, get a camera up, and ask them why don't you want to be saved? You know, why don't you want to join the church? And start compiling information that helps us to be more evangelistic, if you will, because we're not really discovering what's keeping people away from the church. You know? I mean, I've always said it, but I don't think I've embraced what I said. We have to think as if there is no box. And so, however wet that is, in music, in, in technology, in, in prison ministry, in deacon ministry, in discipleship, in marketing, in media, we gotta figure it out. It, and it helped me learn to actually deal with you a little bit better is because, you know, Steve was always coming up with ideas. And, you know, looking at his staff's face, they were always like, I like it. you know, like, oh my God, here you go again. You know, Steve, you can't do that. It's not possible, blah, 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 blah. And because he saw it, it was possible. And, you know, sometimes, I don't know, you know, I get a witness up in here, but sometimes, you know, you bring visions to the table. And, and you know, truth be told, some people can actually feel that way. But if one man saw it, the truth be told, if even if we all didn't see it, 
one of the, the, Steve fired that dude because he said he didn't believe in the vision. He didn't have to believe in the visionary. He didn't have to believe in the staff member. But he said, if you don't believe in the vision, get out. Uh, I think that uh, there's a reason behind everything we do. And if we make the sacrifice, you'll find out what the reason is. And the reason is not driven by me because this was a divine initiative. The reason is driven by God. We're in a different season. Second Timothy is changing. Uh, and it's really at a place where it's divine driven. I think God has planted us as a seed and we're getting ready to burst through the ground. We have to start seeing kingdom as kingdom is. If God gives you a leader. He speaks to the leader. He plants what's called a divine initiative. And then it's up to us to follow that initiative to see what God wants to do with you what God wants to do with us, as opposed to how it takes away from your plan.